for me, the opportunity came along in a number of different ways. Like, for example, I was out speaking on behalf of government, speaking about young people and how young people should get involved in business and how that's a great platform for social mobility. And I was also talking about a number of commercial endeavours. And what happened is that the two collided and I thought, hold on a minute, I really do want to do good, but I also want to make some money. So how can I combine the two together? And that's where social enterprise came out. And I was made a social enterprise ambassador. So I believe that there's not a, a divide between making money which the old Michael Greco way of, of greed is good, and doing good for the community. I believe that they can come together, and that's what I have with the Bright Ideas Trust. For me, a successful entrepreneur is somebody who has ultimate belief in what they're doing, and not crazy style jumping off a cliff like a lemming, but focus and a passion about what they're doing. They have the perseverance and determination to get through the difficult parts, but they have a great ability to plan. I'm not talking about a boring business plan that everybody wants to talk about, but to, to see where they want to go and map out the milestones and steps in order to get there. So although entrepreneurs are seen as mavericks and a bit far out there, they're actually quite focused and really quite dedicated. And I think those skill sets are really important for a successful entrepreneur. I think you can. I think I've come across individuals who have worked for corporates, learnt a trade or a skill or a profession and then eventually stepped outside and run their own companies. What we've got to get away from is that where entrepreneurs are seen as better than business people or in different lights. I think an entrepreneur is that person who goes out and risks their own money and their own time and energy in a, in a, in a private endeavour and anybody can do that. And I think I was an accidental entrepreneur. I worked for a corporate. I was going to work for 25 years, retire and then die. That's the, my path because that's all I ever knew. Once somebody showed me how to do something different and how the same amount of energy I was spending on somebody else's company, I could spend it on my own, it became possible. And once something's possible, then I threw my energy into it. So I think you can learn to be an entrepreneur because as, once again, it's a mindset. It's how you, you see problems, how you see risk. And anybody can learn to do that. Social enterprise is all about effective business, so you focus on the enterprise, but it's around and focus on a social issue. So it's how the profits of that company are actually redistributed to actually not to the shareholders, but to benefit the beneficiaries of that particular business. So there's a number of big organisations out there, like 15, Divine Chocolate and others, and my own organisation, The Bright Ideas Trust, where we focus to raise money, make profits, but reinvest it back into the people we're trying to help. That's it. Um, I have no doubt it will rise in popularity. I think the more that we see economic difficulties like we currently are with the famous credit crunch and whatever you want to call it, where people are talking down in, in the current situation and where big business, particularly within the financial sector, has been shown not to be the most ethical place sometimes in terms of the products and services they produce. Social enterprises have become much more strong because there's a, there's, a, there's a good ethic at the heart of those, as well as wanting to make money and profits. There's about doing good for other people. And we need to move business away from this feeling where, one, it's only for a, a select few, and also it's only about making money because money is only one thing, aspect of business. Lots of people do it just to prove that they can succeed in something or they have a passion around something and take it forward. And what lots of people don't understand is that business as a vehicle is a great way to change things. I remember the first day back in November um, 2004, I was given the new product of launching Amstrad's health and beauty product to the masses, which was an amazing, amazing time. I had two years of turning myself into the, from the most non-metrosexual male into this uber-sexual person who rubbed cream on the back of his hands and said, ooh, and stuff like that. It was an amazing experience, though, because much outside of the actual product, I had to set up a limited company within a PLC from scratch. So I had to pull the team together, do the designs, market the stuff, manufacture it, um, get supplies on board, manage the, the actual sales, do an e-commerce platform, the whole shebang. So it was a fantastic experience. In terms of the product, it worked. It did what it said on the tin. We got chemists to approve it. It was sold in Harrods and Argos. So we did really well with the product. However, it was never going to be my long-term career path, I don't think. Um, particularly as I don't use that much moisturiser. Um, so it was, a bit, it, wasn't, it was a bit empty in terms of the sale. But it was more so that it wasn't about the product, it was about the process. And I think what lots of people have to understand is that when you strip away the product or service, business is quite simple. It's about finding a market, 
finding a product and service that meets that market's needs and making sure that you can make a profit from whatever you sell. And that's what I, I learned from that experience. And that was really the catalyst for me to go out and start my own endeavours because I realised when I look back, I'd done that for somebody else and I'd never would have imagined doing it, selling a health and beauty product. That was not the thing I woke up in the morning and said that I aspire to be that. However, what I learned along that journey was what was important for me to go out and step out and do what I needed to do. Well, what we had to do with that particular product was we had to work out first who was our customer, who were we going to be selling this to. So it was very clearly mapped out who this ideal person was. So we matched out their age, their, where their profile, the whole demographic of this particular space, and then worked out what magazines they really read, what websites they visited, what newspapers they bought. And all those things became very important to give us information about how we targeted our advertising towards them. So we found a celebrity who was associated because the whole space was, the whole beauty space was ruled by a celebrity. Found a celebrity to endorse what we were doing, got her involved in some adverts from the target age range we were trying to focus on as well, and pushed that out to, to a lot of our customers. And it was really about finding out what their needs were and then just meeting those. It really wasn't rocket science. It was like a lot of women within that particular age demographic were worried about the aging process and they were willing to try products which were going to aid them to slow down that process. And what we found is we had a product that did that and we told them about it as much as we possibly could. And we leveraged the marketing that we had from obviously the TV show focused towards that. For those who don't have that, and hopefully not many will sell their soul to the TV devil so they don't have to worry about that. But for those who don't have that, marketing is quite simple. It's just about communicating relevant messages to your target audience in a forum that they want to hear about it. That's it. Mine and Sir Alan's different approach, approaches to business are fantastic because although they may seem um, at either end of the spectrum, they're actually quite complementary because Sir Alan's very direct and he's very to the point, very focused and very focused on the bottom line. And for me, in my education, that was brilliant. And I'm more cooperative in terms of my management style, the way that I do, and I bring people together, lots of resources together to focus on a particular goal. And in our relationship over the two years I worked with him, it was fantastic. We never came to loggerheads because we, we weren't opposed to each other. We weren't trying to fight for the same space. And for me, I learned really good attributes from him in terms of how I could toughen up some of the aspects of my business acumen and apply some of the sales skills that he de he delivered into my own business. So although on the face of it, it's like chalk and cheese, they were actually, they work quite well together. A lot of people, when they get into to, to work, they think about, the first thing they talk about is work-life balance. Got to have a delicate balance between this and I want to go pie and blah, blah. When you're working on your business, and it's something that you really believe in and focus. There doesn't have to be a divide between work and life, I think, because they do overlap. Now, my wife gets really frustrated when I come home and I'm really tired and that stuff, but it's part of who I am now and it's part of what makes me content where I know that I'm, my brain's being stimulated and I'm focused on something I really believe in. I still believe you've got to have that time when you can have some downtime, you can switch off, and, and I get that why I go into the cinema with my daughter or playing and, and chilling out and, and recharging the batteries. However, even when I'm away, I'm still thinking about my business. So it's, it becomes a part of you, it's a part of your life. And I've, rather than focusing on work-life balance, I think what people should be thinking about is, particularly business owners, is about work-life integration. And that's the way to make it happen.